As the Bastille Day example indicates, we find that for those engineers who make it into the federal administra administrative bureaucracy by virtue of their educational trajectory, engineering actually constitutes the highest level occupation in the country. Nothing is higher. As one French analyst, Jean-Louis Barsou, put it in 1989, quote, in France, engineering education does not play second fiddle to medicine or law or architecture. It is the recognized way to the top, both socially and professionally. But not all engineers make it to the top, and most do not come through the Ecole Polytechnique. Following engineers to their places of employment, we find a fairly well-defined hierarchy that begins with the leading state engineers at the top and then extends down through administrative and provincial bureaucracies and then out into what was formerly the, lower, the lowly world of industry. This module begins with a brief historical sketch that examines the rise of what historians call absolutism in France. Engineers and engineering emerged in the midst of an absolutist state, struggling to come to terms with new cultural meanings associated with what is now called the French Enlightenment, and especially the part of it that involved the challenge of reason. We explore the roles played by engineers before and during the French Revolution, and, and then we examine the positioning of engineers in the new educational system formalized in the 19th century. Following the development of different levels of education for engineers offers insight into how French engineers understood the relationship between mathematical theory and practical knowledge. Finally, in approaching the present, we examine further adjustments in the French educational system and, and assess more general tensions that have developed in the wake of the Cold War and the rise of economic competitiveness and globalization as the defining metric of transnational relationships. <laughs>